I wanna talk about all the crazy ways that people are fine tuning text to art generation models. So today I'm gonna to be talking about a website called MageSpace, which has a lot of these fine tuned models for us to play with. So I'm gonna show you the models that are available, some of the stuff that the community's built, and then a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it yourself. And this isn't sponsored, but MageSpace has been on my radar for almost a year. It was one of the first stable diffusion models that I ever remember using. Month after month, they just kept coming out with more of these fine tuned models to the point where I thought maybe there's some value for somebody who wants to use it for these specific cases. And most recently, I even saw a new text to GIF model. So I was like, let's explore Explore. This is MageSpace, a place where you can create a whole bunch of images and art. So we'll go through this explore tab in a minute, but first let me take some time just to walk you through all of the different various fine-tuned models that I've been getting through email. Laura's are the layer of AI models that sits on top of the base model, and they're designed to be excellent at a very specific thing, like faces, characters, styles, or concepts. Laura technically stands for low rank adaption, but just assume that it means a fine-tuned text-to-image model. This is a Cybertruck Laura. It's great for reimagining Tesla Cybertruck in animation style. Great for creating Elsa with armor in the Sakimi chan anime style, which probably means something to someone out there. This is the fire Laura, and that does look sick. I could totally imagine how I'd want to make images like that. Look at that fire dog. He could be in the Super Pet sequel. The Apple Vision Pro Laura. And this is a good example because if you went to Mid Journey, and I have done this before, I've asked for a woman with Apple Vision Pro headset, it never really looks like the Apple Vision Pro. It's It's got some goggly things most of the time, but like you'd have to go in there and type, like make sure it's white, make sure it's rounded on the edges and you'll just never get it. But a fine-tuned model probably looked at lots of extra images of exactly what the Apple Vision Pro looks like. So it can incorporate it into a bigger model, but in a deeper way. So you can still generate all the stuff that the big model can do, but now the Apple Vision Pro looks correct. Pika Swords Laura is great if you want to create weapons for games. Come on, Tron was a cool movie. I mean, not great storyline, but awesome soundtrack and great visuals. And it would have been better with this cat in there, let's be honest. So if you want all your images to kind of have that sense of coherence, that slightly 3D, but still sort of flat animated, kind of bright, colorful, edgy style. I love that. That's cool. Look, Dream Shaper, if you want to create a romance novel or something and have that kind of ethereal look. Absolute Reality, if you just want straight up DSLR photo looking images. Mina Unreal, giving it that video game Unreal look. If you have a restaurant or something and you're going for a retro style, you could generate all your images with this and they would all kind of fit the same theme. From what I can tell, instead of putting an epidermis or skin on top of a character, it always just makes it glass and see-through. Whoa. An alien sci-fi a futuristic thing that might be kind of a cool vibe. This is a Gal Gadot Laura if you need to just make a whole bunch of Gal Gadot for some reason. Oh, now I get it. Because you want Wonder Woman to fight Akira so you have two different Lauras so they can battle. I got it. Although you and me both kind of know who would probably win. Now the overgrown city Laura would be sick. Imagine a, a post-apocalypse movie or something where you want cities and cars and everything to just overgrown because it hasn't been maintained for 10 years or something. Probably wouldn't it generate an overgrown cat, but it just shows the power. Soft, cloudy look. It looks like glass or porcelain, like it would break. That's pretty interesting. Here's a 3D cartoon model. You could generate characters for a kid's book. Yiffy mix, good for our furry friends. Yes, yeah, so I guess if you want like a Snow White sort of story. He is innocent. Unless that is the other furry thing, but I don't think it is. But to be clear, when we're gonna search later, we're gonna be putting the NSFW tag on. Some people are definitely using this site for that stuff. Excellent for semi-realistic anime. Sometimes you guys ask me how I do the yellow and black paper cut style that you see as B-roll in my videos, and that's all done with Mid Journey, so I'm not using Mage Space for that. I just use something called a paper craft cut style, and then I specify black and yellow and whatever the vibe is. Smash that subscribe button. So now let me give you a sense for what kind of things the community is actually generating. So we'll click on explore and then it automatically filters by fantasy art. So we'll go through some of these different prompts, anime, characters, landscapes, whatever. But you should know that if you like something, you can click on it. What do I think is cool here? I guess this, this thing, retro rocket ship machine. And this button here, rerun or remix, is gonna let you start with this image. Well, so when we were talking about those different lores before and all of the different fine tune models, that information will be right here. So it's nice, you can copy the prompt here, see the details of the image here. And there's a social aspect to it so there can be comments I've never really actually seen anybody comment but they exist and here's the people who liked it you know you can report stuff normal social media stuff give it a heart if you want and then explore similar styles so one aspect of just trying to be creative is just clicking around in here until you figure out what it is that you want to make but of course they don't all have to be fantasy art they can also be anime they have characters so if you're storyboarding or coming up with a novel maybe this would be really interesting to you this definitely looks like a Mortal Kombat bad guy it's like origami Assassin's Creed yeah there's some Vikings for you well plague doctor you could build some stories around these characters for sure. 
So some of the fine tuned Loras will give you more landscapes and things like that. Oh, these are beautiful. You could build a whole video game around this one. You could imagine your character working through this path. It's like Zelda or something. What model is this? The URPM model? Yeah, that's cool. Wouldn't it be an AI tool without cyberpunk? Sexy Asian female wearing shimmering translucent mechanical armor. Sick prompt, bro. For that, you get a like. The synthwave punk model is what gave it the style. Some space stuff. Oh, that's, oh my. Oh, there you go, a B-word spaceship. That's what they look like. What is this? He wants an 18 plus beautiful spaceship? Uh, I don't get it. You want a classic painting style? Oh my. So here's the NSFW filter, which I recommend you click before I should have even started filming this video. And like, just to be clear, this tool is definitely used by like that community, the nude community or whatever. Huh? All right, so NSFW filter's on. Let's go back to pop art. Okay, very cool, very cool, very colorful. Cubism. Oh, there is some really cool architecture here. Look at that double layer treehouse with the Liberty model. That's cool. This is Queen Anne style architecture created by the Deliberate model. Whoa, interior design, this looks nice. Look at that luxurious bed. So it looks like they used the Dreamful model and enhanced it by upscaling. So now let's go build a character. We can start from something or from scratch, but the next thing to do would be click up here on Mage Space. So here's where you're gonna type in your prompt. If you want to build off another image, which you might want to do if you want to pose with your own body and then kind of like transition it into like anime style or something, you would click on this button. This is image to image, so it's going to use you or whatever you upload as the base model. So let's just go find a prompt that we like. So we could start with this as a model if you guys like this uh, sword wielding kind of like alligator looking thing or like curly hair everywhere mustache guy. Hmm, both good choices, but I'm a sucker for a god of time. So we'll copy this prompt. So god of time, cinematic steampunk, cinematic again, cyberpunk, character, yada, yada, yada. So this is where it helps if you want to shell out the money. Actually, let's look at pricing. So it looks like free $4, $15 per month. So the lower two tiers, you get ads and no access to the 50 plus fine tuned models or the 2000 plus Loras. So basically $15 a month is what it's going to cost you. So all these that are grayed out, we kind of saw examples from the email at the very beginning, but I did want to point out this one. This is text to GIF. Okay, so it looks like they're generating some like presidential stuff, Corvette driving down the road, lo-fi art girl. Oh, a coloring book dog gif, cool. Oh, black cat DJing Coachella, yeah. I mean, I don't see Coachella, but who knows what's on the other side of the gif. Like anything's possible. I guess even a Godzilla and Trump meeting at a summit? Yeah, so you can see how creative they get. Flowers, vehicles, space. So once you have your prompt up here, this is where you're gonna pick your base model. You can see this is all 95 plus of them. You can use search here if you wanna search through the base models or they've got some categories, like these are the ones that are all photorealistic. Anime, NSFW. Look, there it is, the furry one. Hmm, I don't know about that anymore. In painting and 3D art. Because I'm on the free tier, I'm just gonna get the basic stable diffusion. So then once you click that, it filters the Loras that you can layer on top of the base model. So I don't have access to any of these, but just to peek around, like here's a whole bunch of anime ones, like photorealistic Thanos, that's cool. You want some Tesla cars, Diablo. Okay, so now there's even more settings and this would be more of the kind of thing you might get by adjusting settings on a camera, like a DSLR or something, but much more creative because this is all AI generated. Like double exposure is something you get from a traditional camera. Or negative embeddings might have been something you could have done with film back in the day. Isometric worlds. Here's even something that will mimic a mid-journey style. That's cool. Ink sketch color, stuff like this. So this would be a, you know, basically a third layer on what you're doing. We're not done yet. You have control net. Now control net is something that is allowing people to go into a finished product adjust the face, move the elbows, kind of like rearrange the distance between the eyes, all those little things that would be totally impossible with a real camera. So that's all the model parameters, but let's just check out the settings for a second. A lot of times I'm doing YouTube videos, so I want my output to be a 16 by nine format, meaning it's a rectangle that looks like horizontal. Now steps are just a quality control setting, so I kind of think ratchet it up a little bit, but sometimes if you go through too many iterations, things can sometimes kind of burn in a little too hard, I guess. And guidance is how strict to stick to the prompt. So if I add cute B as a god of time, does it really need to be like a cute B or is it just like a B? We're gonna go stricter. We need a cute B. All right, there's the moment. Let's generate. All right, and there you have it. A cute B, god of time, cinematic steampunk looks sick.